in one account. I'm going to go get the red tier stone ring, finally. Then I'll be going back to the demon ruins, lost Isolith, whatever, wherever. The drakes here are never really a problem for me to get by. Their attacks are really slow. I'll be using the red tear stone ring to take on the demon fire sage. The fight is way too slow otherwise. I'm about to save and quit here, quit here because I wanted to find out a way to quickly get into hyper mode before the demon fire sage fight. I found that Getting hit by one of the one-handed attacks from a Cadra Demon will do it. Again, this is for a soul level 4 hunter base vitality. I don't know if you'd be able to survive the attack as, say, a soul level 3 sorcerer. If that seems too risky to you, you can climb to the top of the stairs and just jump down to the lower level. Five or six times of that should get you into hyper mode. I feel like the Demon Fire Sage isn't discussed enough as a boss. A lot of people underestimate it. I think that's because if, you ha if you're a leveled up character and you have really good equipment, then he's a very easy boss, especially if you're using the Crest Shield or something. But if you're trying to not take any damage at all, it can be a little bit tricky. As soon as you enter the boss room, you want to run straight toward it. I wouldn't suggest sprinting then it should do a melee attack which you should dodge and then get right up next to it. This will send it into a pattern where it only does two attacks, either that butt slam attack or its short range magic attack I'll call it, where it'll slam its catalyst into the ground and cause that AoE. Uh, you need to get some distance when it does that or you know it'll hit you and then you need to get in close again and this can be a little bit tricky because he can use his long range magic attack, which, if he starts using that when you're kind of close to him, uh, not getting hit by that will be a little bit iffy. To, so to get back close again, you want to wait for a melee attack, dodge it, and get in close. Pretty much just like you did when you first entered the room. Keep in mind that the butt slam has a little bit of an AoE, uh, so you can get hit by that. My rule of thumb for not getting hit by the butt slam is to, as soon as he flies in the air, take two steps back and then roll back. You'll notice I'm being cautious when I try to get back in close. That's because again, I want to make absolutely sure he isn't going to use his long range magic attack. Just to go over the general pattern again, because like I said, if you're trying to not take any damage, it can be a bit tricky. As soon as you enter the room, you want to get in close. Uh, whenever he does his butt slam, that's when you take the opportunity to attack. You need to get distance whenever he uses the short range magic attack, and then you get back in close again. Pretty simple.
If you're not that experienced with the Demon Fire Sage fight though, then not taking hits is gonna be a little bit difficult because the dodge timings, at least for me, on his melee attacks are a little bit hard to get used to. To this day, I still get hit by them pretty often. But uh, if you just spend some time practicing and internalizing the timings for them, it's not a big deal. That double attack there is really good for getting in close to him because you'll always have time to do it. Oh yeah, and in case anyone questions my uh, use of fire arrows, despite being called the Demon Fire Sage and being covered in fire, the Demon Fire Sage doesn't actually have any significant fire resistance. He takes more damage from fire arrows than anything. Now to face the terrifying centipede demon. I don't know why I killed these guys. I came down here and realized I wanted to activate the shortcut up to the fair lady's room, so I cut that footage out. And I quit out here because I needed to change some graphics settings. The boss room for the centipede demon is really hard on my frame rate. To the point where it actually makes it a pretty hard boss fight. Which is saying a lot because it's a pretty easy boss fight. I don't know if you'll even be able to notice the lower quality on the YouTube video. But... Whatever the case, it got rid of my frame rate lag. Uh, you want to cross the lava pools if you're totally unfamiliar with this boss fight. Uh, there's a large area over to the right of the room, and you, have ju you just have a lot more room to maneuver. There isn't really anything to say about getting over the lava. You, ha you don't have a lot of leeway when you have base vitality. Just like a half second longer in the lava would have killed me. But if you just do what I do there, you should make it 100% of the time. The centipede demon is pretty easy, but there are some things to say about it. Uh, first of all, that attack is pretty rough, but it's not too hard to dodge, I guess. Uh, when he does that giant jumping attack, it's the easiest thing in the world to dodge. He just falls right back where he jumped from, so move anywhere and you win. Uh, I've never seen him just do it over and over like this though, which sucks because that means I have fewer opportunities to attack. But your general strategy for the Centipede Demon is going to be to just stay behind it. It only has one attack that can hit you when you're behind it. And I'll talk about that when he does it. I couldn't use the Red Tear Stone Ring because I needed some health to cross the lava. It is possible to cross the lava without taking any damage, but I don't see how you could do it consistently. 
I usually take about half my health. I can't believe he jumped so many times during this fight. Uh, it becomes a, a bit of an issue when the centipede demon jumps backward into the lava, so you can't actually stay behind it. Most of its attacks are still pretty easy to dodge, and it won't take very long for him to get for it to get out of the lava. But you still need to kind of be on your toes on the rare occasion that happens. Uh, that's actually, I lied, that's one of two attacks that can hit you when you're behind it. However, you need to stay kind of behind it and underneath the base of its tail. It won't do that attack if you do that. That was just bad positioning on my part. And he can hit you with that attack if you're under his feet, so don't be under his feet either. Fortunately, it knocked me into hyper mode. Oh, by the way, I healed out of hyper mode because I'm an idiot. Don't do that. And that is the one attack that, that it can hit you with. Its telegraphing is pretty obvious. It'll attack the ground in front of it first and then attack its back with, a tail, with its tail. So all you need to do is when you see it attack the ground, just roll forward into its feet and then back out so it doesn't stomp on you afterwards. So do that and you should pretty much never get hit. I got hit several times here because I'm an idiot. And that's a new attack you just saw. It does that attack where it jumps in the air and launches that magic attack downward when it reaches about half health. And if you, again, just stay behind it, it'll never hit you. I've been hit by it once ever, and that was when I was in front of it, so... Uh, I wasn't able to demonstrate it in this fight. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward some of this. But when you first start fighting it, it'll also do a punching attack, and usually it'll do it over and over, like 10 times in a row before it actually gets onto the ground. And that attack is really easy to dodge. You don't actually even need to roll to dodge it. Just run from where it's about to punch, and you'll win. The orange charred ring is pretty nice, but unfortunately with no fire resistant armor at all, I still take a lot of damage from lava. In fact, I've never done a soul level 3 sorcerer run, but I'm pretty sure there are some parts of Lost Isolith that actually wouldn't be possible to traverse as a soul level 3 sorcerer with no armor. Why? Oh. You just wouldn't have enough health to make it. I was going to stop recording because I wanted to go farm some red chunks, which nobody wants to watch. But then I remembered I'd have to uh, go face this uh, daughter of Isolith or Chaos daughter or whatever. 
and I would need to get that recorded, so I started recording real quick. What a tough fight that was. Good thing I let everyone see that. Bye.